Perhaps you've experienced those moments in your calculus class when your intriguing questions were effortlessly deflected by the professor, with the assurance that such depths would be explored in analysis. Alternatively, it might have been that perplexing research paper adorned with mathematical jargon, leaving you to seek answers only to find that the elusive concepts reside in the realm of analysis. Perhaps you've even felt like an impostor in the face of mathematicians' cocktail party banter about derivatives and integrals. Or it could be the realization that the intellectual cool kids are all diving into it, prompting you to broaden your horizons. Regardless of the catalyst, you've taken the leap into studying the intriguing world of real analysis. Yet, despite your keen interest, you may not be entirely sure about what analysis truly entails, why it captivates minds, and how to navigate its intricacies. Delving into a mathematical theory without a roadmap is akin to wandering in a labyrinth. Hence, the Academy of Useless Ideas has conceived a series of videos as your compass through this intriguing journey. In this video, we embark on addressing two pivotal questions crucial before diving into any subject. What does it study? And what makes it inherently fascinating? Before delving into these questions about analysis, let's shift our focus to a more familiar terrain, calculus. How would you define the scope of calculus? And what attributes make calculus such a captivating field? As we embark on sharing our perspectives, it's crucial to acknowledge that we don't claim absolute completeness or infallibility. These are reflections, mere musings, and we wholeheartedly welcome alternative viewpoints in the comments below. So, if you desire a moment of contemplation, don't hesitate to hit pause. And for those feeling daring, share your insights in the comments section. From our perspective, calculus delves into the exploration of rates of change and the accumulation of quantities. It employs a powerful tool to characterize rates of change, the derivative, capturing the essence of instantaneous alterations. On the other hand, for quantifying the accumulation of quantities, calculus introduces the integral a mathematical construct that gracefully sums up infinitesimal contributions. This dual abstraction of derivatives and integrals stands as an indispensable instrument for comprehending the dynamics of natural phenomena. In an early testament to the practical applications of these concepts, consider Johannes Kepler's astute deductions of three laws governing planetary motion an accomplishment achieved through sheer observational prowess in an era predating the formalism of calculus. However, it was the brilliance of Sir Isaac Newton, armed with his recently developed calculus framework, that elevated the study beyond mere observation. Newton effortlessly derived Kepler's laws from foundational principles, highlighting the potency of calculus not just in describing physics, but in revealing its profound principles. The fascination with calculus is undeniably subjective, perceived through the lens of the observer. While some are attracted to the extensive applications of calculus, we, at the Academy of Useless Ideas, take a slightly unconventional stance. Instead of emphasizing practicality, we find joy in presenting seemingly useless yet intriguing reasons to study a subject. Let's delve into our unique perspective on calculus. Firstly, calculus achieves a profound synthesis of seemingly disparate problems the intricate task of understanding rates of change and the enigma of accumulation. This synthesis reaches its pinnacle in the celebrated fundamental theorem of calculus, shedding light on why areas can be assessed using antiderivatives. Secondly, calculus reveals a versatile method for tackling this challenge across a broad spectrum of functions. 
most natural phenomena can be described using the so-called elementary functions formed by repeated applications of polynomials, trigonometric functions, exponentials, and logarithms. The assessment of areas and slopes for these functions can be executed through mechanical calculations. To emphasize the mechanized nature of these calculations, consider that we can program a computer to perform such derivatives and integrals even though the computer lacks knowledge about rates of change or accumulations. That brings us to the third facet of calculus allure its inherently algebraic nature. In a refreshing departure, one momentarily discards the nuanced meanings of functions. Through adherence to straightforward algorithms, we navigate the realm of derivatives and integrals, revealing calculus at its core as an elegant dance of algebraic procedures. This marks a shift in mathematical thinking from the geometric to the algebraic a transition that adds depth to our mathematical reasoning. With a preliminary sketch of calculus in mind, let's redirect our attention to analysis. How do calculus and analysis intertwine? Picture the problems of rates of change and accumulation as the seeds of a potential colossal tree. These seeds germinated and developed roots through the collective efforts of countless minds across centuries, reaching full bloom with the groundbreaking contributions of Newton and Leibniz. From this origin, the tree of calculus rapidly flourished, branching into diverse applications across various fields. However, envision a tree hastily sprouting branches without fortifying its roots. Such a tree precariously teeters on the brink of collapse. In essence, real analysis aims to fortify the roots of the mathematical tree, providing it with a robust foundation. It delves into the technical intricacies that surfaced in the practice of calculus. Surmounting these challenges, certain analysis concepts may initially seem unmotivated, arbitrary, or excessively abstract. However, the enduring nature of these concepts underscores their utility. As you navigate your learning journey, if a concept appears uninspiring, remember that it persists for a reason. We are not discouraging criticism or rational thinking. Quite the contrary. To critique something, understanding is imperative. Thus, we encourage you to dissect your reservation, seeking solutions. Your criticisms might well propel mathematics into uncharted territories or offer streamlined proofs for future generations, an embodiment of how mathematics evolves. To illustrate how a specific challenge can prompt inquiries that delve into the foundational roots of calculus, let's reflect on the quandary of exchanging limits. Derivatives, integrals, and series all find their definitions grounded in limits. Therefore, every instance where you swap two derivatives, two integrals, a derivative and an integral, or a series and a derivative, essentially involves the exchange of two limits at its core. But here lies the crux. Is such an exchange safe? Does the outcome remain consistent regardless of the order in which the calculations unfold? Let's examine the function fxy equal to x squared divided by x squared plus y squared. As y approaches 0, the limit yields the function g of x equals 1, and as x approaches 0, the limit of g of x returns 1. On the contrary, considering the limit of f as y tends to 0 leads to the function hy equals 0, whose limit as y converges to 0 is 0. This simple example shows that exchanging limits is not always correct, which prompts us to wonder under what conditions we can execute that important type of calculations safely.
Fair use scenarios akin to the one illustrated abound, where apparently innocuous calculations yield incorrect outcomes. Those intrigued by such intricacies will find a collection of similar examples in the first chapter of Terence Tao's analysis book. If the prospect of delving into these types of problems appeals to you, drop a comment below and let us know if you'd like a dedicated video exploring these intriguing challenges. Now that we've established a fundamental understanding that analysis aims to provide robust foundations ensuring the accuracy of calculus, let's delve into what makes it fascinating. While one might value analysis for its role in fortifying calculus and expanding its applications, Adopting such a utilitarian standpoint deviates from the guideline principles of the Academy of Useless Ideas. Instead, we perceive the allure of analysis akin to the fascination which an architectural masterpiece, similar to how the Taj Mahal need not serve solely as a practical mausoleum, our interest lies in the inherent beauty of a structure. Analysis as a well-matured theory offers us the opportunity to explore the aesthetic allure of mathematics and its remarkable achievements. While this perspective may appear somewhat incomplete, appreciating beauty remains as objective experience challenging to articulate fully. Yet, as we venture deeper into the subject, our hope is that you'll cultivate your unique aesthetic taste in mathematics. Meanwhile, we invite you to share why you find analysis intriguing. Your insights promise to enrich the collective journey of all enthusiasts on this mathematical exploration. In summary, our pursuit in studying analysis is rooted in the allure of its mathematical structure. Analysis, in turn, is committed to the meticulous reconstruction of calculus from the ground up, establishing a solid foundation that propels its applications to greater heights. Armed with these insights, let's reflect on our starting point. Given that the essence of analysis lies in furnishing foundations for calculus, it's apt to inquire what constitutes a fitting foundation for a mathematical theory? In broad strokes, we contemplate two possible avenues. A constructive approach that endeavors to reconstruct a theory from a more robust foundation, and an axiomatic approach that aims to establish explicit beliefs from which the theory can be constructed. As an illustration of the constructive approach, consider someone concerned with the stability of the real numbers. They could undertake the task of constructing real numbers from the simpler and presumably more stable rational numbers. However, following such an effort, inquisitive minds may question the stability of the rational numbers themselves. This line of thinking could lead them to construct the rationals from integers, the integers from the natural numbers, and perhaps even the natural numbers from set theory. Yet the pressing question persists. How far can this descent go? And what constitutes an unshakable foundation? Regardless of the depth of your exploration, a point will inevitably arise where you must halt. The decision to where to stop hinges on the confidence you place in the foundation. In essence, the descent becomes an introspective exploration of personal convictions. Some might question the rationale behind such a journey, asserting that calculus applications function seamlessly in practical scenarios. Those content with such assurances place their faith in calculus itself. However, probing questions like those concerning exchanging limits may shake the faith of others, motivating them to delve deeper. The more profound the exploration, the better the understanding of one's beliefs and the greater the sense of security about their consequences. In the realm of modern mathematics, the pinnacle of belief systems is encapsulated by set theory. The prevalence of review sections on set theory in most mathematical books is not mere coincidence. It's a deliberate acknowledgement. 
mathematicians in collective consensus have designated set theory as the foundational bedrock for the entirety of mathematics. This doesn't imply unanimously certainty or a lack of skeptics within the mathematical community. Instead, it signifies the prevailing confidence place in set theory at this juncture. The most compelling evidence in its favor lies in the absence of contradictions discovered thus far, despite its pivotal role in the underpinning structure for all contemporary mathematics. However, the process of constructing mathematical theories from the absolute ground up can prove to be a somewhat arduous undertaking. Hence, a more expedient alternative emerges, axiomatizing the theory. In this approach, instead of laboriously building a mathematical object from sets, we articulate its essence through axioms. These axioms serve as the precise tenets we are willing to accept about the object in question. Once the axioms are established, the subsequent step involves delineating our rules of deduction. Subsequently, our duty as mathematicians transmutes into leveraging these axioms and deduction rules to derive further truths about the mathematical object under scrutiny. In summary, our mathematical journey presents two distinct routes, the constructive path where we meticulously build mathematical objects from purportedly simpler ones, or the axiomatic route where we define the mathematical object through axioms and deduce truths using prescribed deduction rules. These pathways, however, aren't as independent as they may initially seem. As previously explored, the cornerstone of modern mathematics rests on set theory. Given our disinterest in constructing sets from simpler entities, we find ourselves compelled to axiomatize them. For those inclined towards curiosity, multiple axiomatizations of set theory abound. Notably, the Zermelo Frankel with the axiom of choice stands out as arguably the most commonly embraced axiomatization in the realm of set theory. However, delving into the intricate task of constructing calculus from set theory is a journey we'll reserve for another day. The prospect of such a construction is undeniably fascinating, and we are eager to embrace that challenge in the future. For now, our focus lies on adopting a more axiomatic stance to delineate a mathematical structure conductive to analysis. Before we unfurl the axioms shaking our approach, a preliminary exploration awaits. Assuming a basic acquaintance with the rational numbers, we'll transverse the terrain of describing them. Yet, as we embark on this exploration, it becomes evident that relying solely on the rational numbers proves insufficient for the nuanced demands of calculus. This intriguing realization forms the crux of our journey. Detailed discussion of these explorations are reserved for a future video. In the interim, your reflections on a set of intriguing questions would be most welcomed. How would you articulate the concept of sets? What methodology would you employ to construct the natural numbers from sets? Extending this, how might one go about constructing the integers from the natural numbers? And then, with integers at hand, how does one progress to construct the rationals? Moreover, can you offer a description of the rational numbers without delving into the intricacies of constructing them? Lastly, ponder on the question of why. In your perspective, the rationals fall short when attempting to grapple with the complexities of calculus. Your musings on these queries are a valued addition to our ongoing exploration. May these questions spark your intellectual curiosity and provide an enjoyable avenue for contemplation. Should the musings inspire you to share your insights, don't hesitate to leave your answers in the comments section or consider joining our vibrant discussions on Discord. The realm of mathematics beckons, and we eagerly anticipate the insights and perspectives you bring to the conversation. Until our next exploration, happy pondering.